There are over 1 million species of insect on our planet. Some are striking and beautiful. Some have developed disguises that help them disappear into the background entirely. And some of them seem to have come from the imaginations of the world's most eccentric horror and science fiction writers. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm searching for the strangest and deadliest secrets of the natural world. And today, I'm tracking down some of the strangest and most terrifying insects in the United States. Our search takes us to the mountains of Arizona. The cool, arid climate creates a unique environment unlike anywhere else in the world, and it follows that a distinct habitat will have distinct creatures. Some of the mountain's strangest denizens aren't living on the surface, but by flipping over rocks, we can open windows into their subterranean world. And if we're lucky, we'll stumble onto some really strange orthopterans. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. Final. I do have a pair. Finally. I've been one of these for forever. Let me see. How is he gonna behave? Let's see here. Can I just, can I just do this? Yep, I'll do. Ah, oh, look at that. That's a Jerusalem cricket. This is probably one of the weirdest creatures we could have possibly found. Have a look at this. It looks almost like some kind of scorpion or weird spider, but this is actually an insect. That is a Jerusalem cricket, and it is really, really funny looking. It's like the way its feet feel on my skin is really strange. You can see those spiky growths there on the insect's tibia, and I can feel them poking into my skin as he walks around. This right here is one cricket I've been looking for and hoping to find for years. And what's funny is they always look a lot scarier in photos. This one, it, it really in person is a lot more funny looking than it is scary. A lot of people will find these, like they'll, they'll turn up in their basements or in their house. And because they have this really, really odd, chunky, kind of alien looking appearance, people see them and they get kind of freaked out. Just because it is funny looking doesn't mean I can totally let my guard down. Look at the jaws on the front of this cricket here. Their primary food is actually roots and to be able to eat roots they have to have really strong really sharp jaws so um you can bet that this insect can give you a pretty pretty impressive bite i don't know about one this size they get considerably bigger than this but this is the only one we've seen so far flipping rocks for a while it's still a pretty impressive bug nonetheless now these guys are pretty interesting because they are actually in their own family like you can see looking at them how they're related to crickets they have those little little jumping legs in the back. They kind of have that general cricket appearance, but they don't act like any of the typical crickets that you might find in your backyard. They're actually pretty, pretty strange and pretty unique. And the first thing I'm noticing is just how much it moves. Usually like a cricket, it would either have jumped off or it would sit still by now. This guy, as you can see, he's very, very busy. As you can see, they don't have any wings. So they're not gonna be calling in the same way that you're field crickets and house crickets and katydids and stuff would. What they actually do is very, very, very unusual. See, unlike most crickets, they don't have ears. And they don't need ears because they're living underground most of the time. They're not really looking for things based on sound. What they're doing instead is relying on chemical signals. See, their antennae are very, very busy. I've actually never quite seen an insect whose antennae are just furiously scanning like this one. They have eyes, but I can't imagine their vision is very good. But a lot of how they understand their world is actually through vibrations. You see that big old abdomen there? That abdomen serves a really unique purpose. What they'll actually do is they don't come out of their burrows very often, but if they do, it's usually to forage or to look for mates. And if they're looking for mates, they'll actually drum that abdomen on the ground really, really odd. And what it creates is these little seismic waves. If any willing partners are nearby, they can actually follow the intensity of those vibrations to find a cricket they might be interested in. Look at that, Jerusalem crickets. One of the strangest subterranean invertebrates. And if you live in the Southwest US, they're probably in your backyard. 
And some of the strangest insects actually do wind up in our backyards. Under cover of darkness, some real freaks slink out of the woodwork. But by using a strong light, you can sometimes pull them out of the shadows and get a good look at the creepy creatures that go bump in the night. That's a beetle. Hold on. Now this is a beetle. It's not one of the longhorns like we've been seeing. This is one of the metallic tiger beetles. And look at the jaws on that insect. That is one absolutely mental looking creature. Now what's funny is tiger beetles look menacing, but their bite is actually not that serious. It is a strong little pinch there, but as jagged as those jaws look, they actually can't puncture human skin. Definitely not something to be afraid of. Now this is a nocturnal species, but all tiger beetles are predators. When they're only an inch long, they might not be able to do much, but for their body length, Tiger beetles are the fastest land animals on Earth. Scaled up to human size, they'd be able to run over 480 miles per hour. Let's just be glad that they're only an inch long. And they're patrolling the ground looking for ants, cockroaches, termites, a lot of household pests. So seeing a tiger beetle like this is a really good sign that you've got good pest cleanup crew around your house as a moth buzzing my phone there. This light trap is insanely busy, and my guess is this tiger beetle is looking to play some cleanup with the insects that hit the tarp and fall onto the ground. They're opportunistic predators. Anything soft enough that they can actually grab with their jaws and small enough for them to overpower is fair game for food for this tiger beetle. That is an insane, beautiful little insect. Look at how metallic this creature actually is. That's where it gets its name, the metallic tiger beetle from that incredible iridescent sheen on its elytra. Absolutely beautiful find, and the night is only just starting. As weird as the insects in our yards might get, they get even stranger deeper into wilderness. In the swamps of Northern Florida, there is a real alien that flits among the stalks of low-lying vegetation on the hunt for rotting corpses. Check this out, that is a very, very special insect. One I've been looking for for a really long time and one I bet you've never heard of. What I've got right here is a scorpion fly. I'm gonna grab him really quick before he escapes so we can take a closer look. Look at that. This is not only a species of insect I've never seen before, but an entire order. What I've got right here is a scorpion fly and a really crazy looking one. See those colors? That would be aposomatic coloration, but question is, are these things actually dangerous? I think I'm gonna take it out and find out for myself. Hi, buddy. Hi. Look at that right there. Oh, he's trying to grab me, but, but look at that. It looks like he has a stinger, but it actually isn't used for stinging. And you notice I keep saying he. I can actually tell that this insect is a male because only the males have these crazy looking, scorpion looking tails on the back and it's actually used for mating. The scorpion fly, as you can already see, is not actually a scorpion, but it's not a fly either. They're in their own order of insects and evolutionarily, they're more closely related to like butterflies and fleas than true flies. And it's actually thought that these guys or one of their ancestors are a missing link in the evolution of modern day butterflies and moths, which is kind of crazy because this thing looks almost more like a wasp or like a leaf hopper. Really, this insect kind of looks like a bunch of random odds and ends of insect parts were sort of just hodgepodge into one creature. They're really, really strange. And this one is especially interesting looking. Look at that coloration there. That bright red on jet black would be a form of aposomatic coloration, but no scorpion flies are dangerous to people. This is some kind of mimicry, and I'd guess he's probably trying to mimic some of the different ants and wasps that we get in this part of Florida here. Generally speaking, if you're a predator in this kind of environment, you see those bright colors, you're probably just gonna be safe and you know leave it alone because stings are no fun. So if it's not dangerous to people, you're probably expensive. Well, what what do they do? What is the purpose of this exceptionally weird insect? And I'm glad you asked that because they're actually really, really important. These insects are scavengers. They're eating all kinds of dead, decaying things, particularly animal matter. And what's crazy is scorpion flies 
are really important to like murder investigations because as scavengers, they're oftentimes one of the first insects to show up when a body is decaying. So if a, if a crime scene investigator is looking at a body and they see scorpion fly larvae on it, they can tell that it's a recent kill due to how fast these scorpion flies can actually find rotting corpses. Kind of morbid, but kind of crazy. This particular species right here is actually the mourning scorpion fly, like you're mourning a dead person. So that's uh, kind of relevant to this guy's biology. But have a look at that insect. They look really, really crazy, almost like the uh, the Imperial spy from Star Wars, or like an elite version of him that works for the Emperor specifically. I can already hear Palpatine being like, do what must be done. Cause like, I mean, he looks like he'd be like in the Imperial Guard or something. That crazy jet black on red coloration. Absolutely marvelous insect. I cannot be any more excited than, than I am right now. Just to find, finally, after years of doing this channel, finally getting a scorpion fly up close and personal. Hi buddy, you are weird and that is why we absolutely love him. The scorpion fly isn't the only swamp creature that can give you nightmares, but to find this one, we have to look below the surface of the murky waters. Patrolling the substrate of nutrient-rich watersheds is one of the most fearsome insects on the planet. What I have right here is probably one of the strangest insects you could possibly find, and is also one of the most fearsome. Look at the jaws on this thing. This is a helgramite, and a proper one at that. I've seen little ones before, but this is a huge, huge Corydalus. This is going to grow up to become one of the fearsome Dobson flies, one of the strangest creatures you can possibly find, usually at your porch lights, and they freak a lot of people out every single year. And this might be a nightmarish looking animal, but it turns out they're actually really important. Out here in this swamp, in this little creek system, finding one of these is a huge indicator that this area is full of life. A Helgramite is one of the most sensitive types of insects you can find in an aquatic ecosystem, and they need an incredibly oxygen-rich environment to survive. And, oh man, they're menacing. You can see right there, he's trying to bite me. And Helgramites, they can bite. Even as adults, the females are known to have a really nasty bite. And this is an aquatic predator. These these jaws are menacing for a reason. It's gonna be attacking all kinds of little soft-bodied invertebrates in this little swamp ecosystem. But what's crazy is, once it turns into an adult, its diet's gonna change dramatically. And they're gonna actually be feeding on mostly, if they eat at all, nectar and things like that. And that's actually kind of interesting life strategy here. This insect has what's called a holometabolous lifestyle. They go through complete metamorphosis. And what's interesting about that is a lot of holometabolous insects will actually have very different diets between their larval stage and their adult stage. And that actually is good because in a dog-eat-dog -dog world like the world of insects that you can find in your own backyard, competition can be really high. There are thousands if not millions of species of insects in the world, which means there's not a whole lot of room for competition for food and resources. If your larvae eat the same thing as your adults, your species is going to have some difficulty surviving. But but having larvae living in the water, eating other insects, then adults flying around above land and eating nectar if they eat it all is a really smart way to cheat the system. How about that beautiful, albeit creepy looking, Helgramite out here in the swamp? I'm not sure what it is about the insect world and having terrifying larvae, but the Helgramite isn't the only one. While flipping rocks in the hill country of northern Louisiana, I stumbled onto an even more terrifying larva, which looks like it's straight out of science fiction. Oh, what the heck? Oh, look at this thing. I can't get this rock off, but that is terrifying looking. That's an insect. Is it alive? Yeah, yeah, he's trying to cling to the rock to camouflage. Hi, buddy, look at that. Oh, that is one weird looking insect. This is actually an owl fly larva. I thought it was an antlion at first because look at that, that shape there, big old body, and those almost like antler-like jaws. My brain thought antlion. Technically, it's a close cousin, so I wasn't totally incorrect, but this is a very, very special find. They're not seen very often at all as adults, let alone as larvae. And mostly because they're living under rocks or in bark and stuff, using that flat drab appearance to camouflage and wait in ambush. See, he's sitting still right now, but he's alive. You can tell 
if I move them around, he'll like adjust. They'll sit there using that flat body to just completely seal against rocks, against like the bark of trees and these jaws splayed open just like that. And what happens is other insects will walk past and those jaws can snap shut and grab it. And these guys, as slow as they are, they're strong. I can feel this insect is kind of built tough as I'm holding it when it fights against my grip. It's tiny, it's soft bodied, but it is really, really strong. So I bet you a little caterpillar or ant or even some of the termites and stuff we've been seeing running around under these rocks, they don't stand any chance at all against the sheer power of this insect. But but that's not all. See, the larvae of the insect order Neuroptera, the lacewings, the ant lions, the owl flies, they're actually venomous, which is kind of wild, right? They're, they're scary enough as it is. You know, what do they need venom for? Well, sometimes they will take down prey larger than they are, and their venom is actually in these jaws right here. See those really, really sharp ends? But that what they'll do is they'll find weak spots in the armor of their prey, grab them, work those jaws in, inject their prey full of paralyzing venom. And that means that that thing is not gonna struggle when this guy starts to eat. Now, those Neuropteran larvae are absolutely metal. Some of the craziest insects, some of the scariest insects on the planet, which is funny because the adults are kind of goofy looking at best and kind of stupid looking at worst, but they're basically harmless. Some of them will eat like aphids and stuff, but most of them can't really do anything as adults. Their entire purpose is just to mate. They spend most of their lives in this stage right here, the hard to find and very, very fearsome looking stage. And this is wild. This is like, you know, we're, we're just out here flipping, looking for giant centipedes and tarantulas. We're, we're not looking for this at all. This is one of those happy little moments you have when you're out just, just looking for stuff and you come across something that you've never seen before in your life. We are not empty handed on bizarre, unusual wildlife like this owl fly larva. Absolutely incredible. The world of insects is full of weird secrets. But with the incredible biodiversity on our planet, it doesn't stop there. One of the absolute weirdest creatures in the world isn't an insect at all, but a distant relative found only in the remote jungles of the tropics. If you'd like to discover the unusual world of the velvet worm, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.